I think he said Whiteman Park is a hoot. <laughs> Come to EnviroFest 2024. Learn about Whiteman Park's birds and discover ways to improve your sustainability with hands-on workshops and demonstrations. Plus, there'll be market stalls, food trucks and heaps of kids' activities. EnviroFest 2024 at Whiteman Park on March 23 from 10 till 3. <laughs> You'd be wise to go to whitemanpark.com.au. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. As you've been following here at Noble, mm. we've been undergoing construction. Uh, we're doing a bit of a renovation here. Well, not even a bit. Like the whole of the other end of the building, up in sales and all that sort of stuff, completely getting re it's, it's been gutted. They're moving the kitchen. Everything. Which is big stuff. That's yeah, big stuff. Yeah. Up this end of the building, we're just getting the studio done. Yeah. Every time we get a guest in, we've got to... Um, Apologise. Apologise for the way... <laughs> Well, because this is, in the hallways. because they, they, they've shut off the entire other part of Nova, so literally just this yes. production area is the only place that anyone can access. So this, mm. of course, has become the storage area for many new chairs and yes, stuff as everything. well. So, yeah, it does we're look like squeezed. a warehouse. We're all squeezed yeah, into one yeah. small area. The, the real great thing about this is the uh, tradies that have been around. Mm. They're just such good guys, um, apart from the fact that they are destroying the male toilets. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, it has never seen so much power. It's unbelievable. Uh, anyway, so that's that. But that in itself that has aside, become really yes. funny. Um, anyway, so we just um, have a chat to some of the tradies here and there. And um, uh, the other week uh, we were doing our show, right? And in here we've got a glass, a bit of glass that looks into each studio. So just, we're in Ross's studio right now and we can see each other. And they've put a curtain thing up there, which yes. was sort of loose and was sort of gaping a little bit, but we couldn't see in. And that's, I Be think... Be careful with that word, I, mate. I know. It's very strong. <laughs> so I apologise to anyone that trig- that triggered. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought it was for us not to look in there to be so distracted. So that we'd be surprised when we see yeah, it, like, yeah, so, yeah, like on the makeover show. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they drop it. Move that box! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all start crying. But no, it turns out it's yes. not for that. So anyway, I was having a chat with him and he goes, and he goes, and so the other day, um, or the other week, um, I saw someone pull the curtain back and have a look, and Ooh. I turned around. And it was just a before, tiny peek, yeah, wasn't and, it? And yeah, and just before it went back, I, I missed them, and I was like, "Oh, damn!" Because that would have been so exciting for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't see anything. And, yeah. Hello, hello. Anyway, I um, I met the trader that did it. Uh, he's a funny little bugger, and he come up and he goes, "Oh, Nathan." He goes, "Um, he goes, oh, I had a peek in your studio the other day," and I went, "Oh my god, we, that was you. We, we saw the back end of that. Yeah, you should have like, opened up properly and, yeah. and waved." And he said, "Oh, no, no, no." He goes. We were specifically told not to look in there while you're doing your show. <laughs> and he goes, that was one of the rules. And I yes. went, like, oh, come on. And he, goes, yeah. and he goes, anyway, long story short, I'm not allowed in that studio anymore. And so he lost <laughs> his privileges. Because <laughs> he, he had a sneak peek. Because he had a sneak peek. But you know what? This is the thing about tradies yes. especially. You get to work on some amazing projects and yeah. you get to work in some really different areas. And I'm sure that everyone would have been given the mandate of don't go on, don't go in there, don't, don't go, go in there, there. Yeah. Yes. don't look at that. That, don't, don't use touch that this. toilet. Yeah, you know, but like, I mean, if the opportunity's there and no one's around, why wouldn't you? You've got to have a sneaky yeah. if, one for well, sure. If somebody tells you not to, that then just you want to. absolutely makes you want to do it. For the record, for that tradie and the other tradies who've been working there, that wasn't our request. No. We didn't say we, we don't want them looking at you. We, we would, would have loved that. We would love that down and we would just sit here and watch you. You'd be our like favorite. You'd be like the block. We would just be watching you do that and it'd be so exciting. But. That's Anywho, not up to us. They wouldn't let us. <laughs> we want to talk to tradies, right? And we want to know if you were specifically told not to do something while yes. on the job. And you know what? You did it. Because yeah. I mean, the opportunity was there and like no one saw. I want to know if you got in trouble or not or yes. if they never found out. Clayton's in Hilton. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Clayton. Clayton. Hi, Clayton. What sort of job were you on and what were you told you couldn't do? Okay. Um, like years ago, I was living in London and... I'm a carpenter by trade. I was living in London and the Tutankhamen exhibit was in town. <laughs> yes. I was uh, at Go To Arena and yeah. it's all very official. So you do your work and then an artifact comes in the room and they're like, all right, everyone, you got to leave the room while the specialists come in and put the artifact in. And anyway, we were, uh, Sharon Osborne was visiting one day and we were all yeah. told, oh, you can't, you can't say hello to Sharon Osborne, you know. <laughs> 
but you can't, when you virtually bump into Sharon, you can't really mock my off. <laughs> yeah. Sharon, like, you know, I, and she was the loveliest lady. <laughs> so you stopped, you literally ran into her, stopped yeah. for her, you thought, oh, I've got to have a chat now. Well, it'd be rude not to, Sean. He's bumped into her. Exactly, exactly. What did you get so out of it, Clayton? Uh, in, information was. Ah, uh, not a lot, but she's just like, oh, how are you? This is a great job for you to work on, and you know, you're Australian and all this, and just mm. all the little, just little chit chat. Yeah. It wasn't going too mm. deep. Mm. But she was lovely. Yep. Mm. And then he slept with her. Yep. Oh, <laughs> so did, Clayton, did, you did. Is that? Can you confirm that? Did you get in trouble, Clayton? <laughs> Uh, you know, it wasn't like lose your job, but they were they were, they shunned me a bit. But they're all Ameri- they're all Americans that were doing the show. They yeah. they travel around the world setting up the projects wherever they go. So yeah. I, I heard it's a general rule for tradies, and they've been told not to speak to Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I well, just, I just wherever thought, she like, may be, because I've heard that many times from my I, tradie mates. Mm, I never realised that reckons. Sharon Osbourne was an Egyptian <laughs> artifact. That's just amazing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thanks, Clayton. Gary's in Alcamos. Hello. Morning, guys. Hey, there you go, Gary. Okay. What job were you on and what were you told you couldn't do? Uh, this this is many years ago. We were working at Her Majesty's Theatre doing the carpet in the main theatre. <laughs> yes. Um, and it was in January and the project was running a little bit behind. So um, we said, yeah, we'll work Australia Day. And so what we, and we were told, obviously, you've got the keys to get in, etc., and all that. Just stick to what you've got to do. Don't be wondering about that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so what we did was we got the um, the wives and the kids to come in on the train, bring a picnic, <laughs> and then uh, got there later in the day, went up through the uh, the attic, up onto the top of the roof and watched yes. the fireworks. <gasps> oh, oh, Gary! That's thinking. Uh, Where's well Sharon done. Osborne there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she was that. actually, but we couldn't talk to her. Cause, cause <laughs> yeah, because rules are rules, aren't they, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> rules are rules, so, uh, <laughs> That's so clever. Yeah, it would have been amazing. I like that. I, there's something yeah. really primal about wanting to get on the roof of something, yes. isn't there? Like, and also, oh, I mean, got fireworks. A great opportunity. If there's fireworks, you've got to look at them. Okay, that is so what a, good. What a, and uh, they're also working a public holiday. You've got to have a bit and of reward also, at the end of that. Yeah. And also, who else can say that they have mm. done that, had a picnic while watching the fireworks on top of His Majesty's? It's amazing. Come on. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. <laughs> I think he said Whiteman Park is a hoot. <laughs> Come to EnviroFest 2024. Learn about Whiteman Park's birds and discover ways to improve your sustainability with hands-on workshops and demonstrations. Plus, there'll be market stalls, food trucks and heaps of kids' activities. EnviroFest 2024 at Whiteman Park on March 23 from 10 till 3. <laughs> You'd be wise to go to whitemanpark.com.au. Hello. Hey, oh, guys, Sebastian. Oh, look How at this, you, buddy? Mate. Mate. And Nat and Sean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mate, you know what? You're just Double getting better trick. and better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. It mm. was a package deal. We have to be here. The contract says so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Yeah. Good, mate. Yeah, how are you? You just, you know what? You're, you're just never going to be out of the zeitgeist, are mm. you, Guy Sebastian? You just keep producing quality and getting to, be, getting to be a better and better bloke. It's disgusting. <laughs> I <laughs> just refuse to go away. <laughs> <laughs> No one wants it's, to it's, always. Yeah, though. that's right. People aren't sick of you. That's yeah. and, and that's not always the case, guy. You know what so I mean? So many people. So many times we get um people. So and so, there's yeah. an interview opportunity with them. We go nut and nut with you. If we spoke to you yesterday or two days before, and we'd say <laughs> yes every time. Mm. So I love a chat. Yeah, I, just, I know. Like, the problem is the problem is if like when Jules is asked why we're still together. Her answer's that as well. He just refuses to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's half the battle. That's right. Just actually being there. <laughs> oh, that's great. Persistence. Yes. Persistence. Yeah. Hey, Guy, guy uh, we're going to be talking about Antidote, your new um, song out with Sam Fisher. Um, but ha- how, how much time have you been able to put aside to get stuck into writing new music mm. and, and producing stuff? Quite a lot. Um, as in, yeah, uh, look, it, it, I've been writing for like, over two years for this album. My last album, Truth, came out a while ago. But yeah. um, it's funny, the writing process, like you start and you think you know the sort of sound that you want to make on the next record, but then it evolves and songs that you love at the start that you're like, oh, that's a definite, you know, you start a little, I'll oh, start a folder and I put it in this faves folder and then and then you end up just falling out of love with it or it just feels like the album goes somewhere else. And So I've been writing for a while, but I reckon I'm done now. Like I just did this trip for a 
about 10 days, 11 days in LA. I wrote every day, but there's probably three or four that I really liked, maybe three that I'll end up cutting, which is a good strike rate. I think I did six sessions and ended up, yeah, like I'll, I'll cut three of them, but that's all. I reckon that's all I need for the album. And so, yeah, look, I used to pump them out. Like I, I used to try and I felt this pressure. Like I was like, oh, you know, because fans would write to you. They're like, when's the new album coming yeah, out? And I'd, I'd always yeah. feel I'm like, in, I'm, I'm in your hedge that. waiting at the back of your house. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear something. Yeah. You were talking about old school way of doing things. Mm. I want to talk about the new school way of doing things. And we know Megan Trainer, um, she's written a few songs with TikTok in mind mm. because she knew that mm. they would be able to blow up. Are you starting to think like that? Um, not not really. I don't know. Look, I I'm trying not to be like I don't want to be like super negative or anything. I just I I feel like it's always changing. Like it changes all the time, right? Like I look at this song, for example, Antidote. Yeah. Like TikTok actually had a huge part to play, not even directly with this song and with someone like Sam Fisher. So when when I wrote this song, yeah. it was ac- actually my it was my drummer's wedding. He said to his wife Jess in the wedding speech he's like oh you're just you know he's crying and he's he's from Perth <laughs> yeah and he, yeah and we're very emotional. emotional we are very, very emotional, emotional. <laughs> very <laughs> in touch with your emotions yeah, yeah. Uh, we're Perth love, we're men. Lovely. and he's like you're yeah, so he said you're the antidote to all my problems, and it was such a beautiful mm. thing to say. Does he get songwriting credits and some yeah. money? Then <laughs> you, Steve, <laughs> you better no, my, have given him a good gift. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were standing next to each other, we were quite a few busy yeah. yeah. by that by that point, and he's like, "Man, that is so beautiful." <laughs> <laughs> like, man, that's 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 a good thing to say to someone. And we're like, "Oh, let's I'll write a song tomorrow." So I ended up doing that i came home and i, I sort of put down this little um thing on on, on my uh, like voice notes and then sam came over the next day and i played it for him and he was like dude this is sick like let's do it this is the one but we started chatting about his song this city and this city i added it like a year and a half before it blew up yeah to my spotify and yeah. then I asked him and he said, oh, dude, I was at rock bottom. I was broke. I was dumped by my label, dumped by my management. And then they were like, oh, yeah, you can have – he asked for the masters and they were like, yeah, you can have your masters, like you can have your songs, whatever. And then he he was about to give up because he just like sort of was broke. And, and this TikToker posted his song and it blew up and it went viral and then suddenly he got signed to a, you know, a global deal. That's He's amazing. Doing, like duets with Demi Lovato. Yeah. And so, wow. Yeah, something like TikTok just – you know, it just boosted it. But, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like it's really tiring. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I know we, I do. <laughs> we talk about that as being a thing. You know, can, I just say, can you be bothered? We're, we're pretty Jesus. much, we're pretty much, um, our, our careers are along the same timeline. We're about all, we're yes, all about 20, 20 years, years in. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all just yeah. really tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm sick of trying to like, I, I just want to make art and whatever happens with it happens. Like, yeah. I think, yeah. I think so often we try and put like these, like, like, what, what do I determine the worth of things that I create? It's not like, it's not charts or airplay or all that sort of stuff. That's all amazing be- only because people get to hear it. That's yeah. So when yeah. you make art, you want people to hear it. Yeah. So even if you reach X amount of people that say, hey, this helped me through this or this did this for me, I, I feel like there's purpose in everything. But but the vehicle changes all the time. And, mm. and even in the last three years, like, so, so now they only pretty much sign people who are big on TikTok. So I'm not really talking about myself. I've been doing it for ages, yeah. but I look at my mates and peers and people in the music industry. They're like, well, I don't really know how, how to become viral or do, I just know how to make music. And I've like put in my 10,000 hours. They're, these guys yeah. are beat. There's someone in Perth that I discovered recently yeah. and he is insane like he's so unbelievably talented and i'm going to start writing with him he's he's um he's only young his name's ethan french yeah and I, I don't know if he's listening but he like <laughs> he'll, he'll be like losing that, his like, mind right now <laughs> for years <laughs> no, like, he's he's such a beast of a musician yeah. Yeah. and i don't know i just get a bit skeptical of things and a bit cynical Tricks. because i feel like there's these beast musicians out there that are just kind of struggling and then yeah. for example i'm signed to universal right mm-hmm. and, yeah, yeah. and so they're they're in a bit of a um a thing with TikTok at the moment, and so I'm making music, but Universal, who I'm uh, published to, like they yes. they're my like songwriting publishers. All my music's been taken off, so yeah. Antidote's t- taken off. So you know your label, everyone's saying 
you know, make sure you, you cover like TikTok and all that sort of stuff. And it feels like you just sort of get knocked around a bit and you just want the music to rise. But I, what I tell people all the time is I reckon maybe we've had this like overcorrection of, of like, it feels like anyone can make it to make it, you know, whatever yeah, that means. Yeah. But like, feels like anyone can release music and anyone can do that. But historically there's only a few people right like the cream rises to the top yeah, yeah, yeah. and i feel like maybe it's correcting to a more real place where it's like everyone can do this for a living but um you know not like not everyone can do it for a, a living but hang, i'm so sorry how do i ignore this center voicemail my best <laughs> mate's calling um, <laughs> like but I feel like maybe it's it's you know not all bad that it's hard for cream to rise to yes. the top because I think it's going to focus back on just the art and the classic timeless nature of good art and that that cream will rise to the top you know and and but it's hard I don't know yeah. I'm venting here this yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Sure. can I, just say, can I can argument, quickly really? say that you're venting right Sean I, do, do you not feel like he's just reading a most beautifully written script the way mm. he just is talking? You're very articulate. Sean, when Sean speaks for that long, he gets lost about where he is. <laughs> I do. And then you can see the panic on his face because he realises, wait, I've forgotten even what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then he just keeps using words to see if he can find his way back. You, and two that, weeks later, that, he realises that he didn't. Well, I'm getting a masterclass on how to stay yes. on track. That was really good. Oh, no, can I tell you, that oh. is actually one of my favourite things ever because I, you know you sort of realize yes. that you realize talking is an actual gift and and i i i actually realize that more now than ever by being on the voice because yeah. you, know, you have yeah. different coaches and there's different coaches i've worked with and one of my favorite things to do is when someone starts talking and i I know there's no landing spot. For it. <laughs> I know. It's, I know. It's, it's, dry. it's thrilling. No, guys. I love yeah. watching how they try it's- and like. Get through it. It's so funny. Yeah, guys, when Sean guys. does it, when Sean oh, does it, we mate. literally, we they, literally, yeah. Sean looks at it and we literally just lean back and just enjoy the ride because I'm like, yeah, yeah where, where's this where going? Is there's this sometimes go? where I'm, 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 there's a word that escapes me and I know these two know the word when and they jump in and just it. like, geez, I don't know, the, the word, and they just move back from the microphone <laughs> and I'm just drowning. <laughs> and radio, I don't care what anyone says, yeah. radio is one of the hardest possible things. It's so much pressure. Like, you can't edit yourself. You can't, yeah. like, highlight yourself. It's just whatever comes out is yeah. out, and you try to articulate a thought. <laughs> like, you lose a word in that moment, and then it's not like a normal conversation. No. You're thinking, oh, my God, everyone's listening. <laughs> find the word. Can you find the word? Find the word. <laughs> oh, wow. You get that sick feeling or something, like, you yeah. know, when you realise you've gone like, through a red oh. light? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the feeling. Did they get me? Did they get me? Oh, oh no. my gosh, shit. <laughs> anyway, you've got a thousand more interviews to do, so yes. we've got to Get, let you go, we buddy. love your work, though. We'll talk to you anytime. <laughs> yep, yep. And a oh, shout out to you. Sam's in, Sam's in town, French. so we should get uh, get a little chat with Sam. He's such a legend. Sam, oh, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah far out. He's just have, when you listen to this song, just have a listen to his tone. Mm. Okay, like I, yeah. I'm in. The, I'm in. Uh, you're looking at me in my studio where I recorded. I recorded the song just yeah. there on that piano, and then I had him just in that room recording yes. his vocals. Far out, like have a look, have a listen to how chocolatey and yeah. rich his tone is. I never get tired of listening yeah. to him sing. Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. dot you. I think he said Whiteman Park is a hoot. <laughs> Come to Enviro Fest twenty twenty four. Learn about Whiteman Park's birds and discover ways to improve your sustainability with hands on workshops and demonstrations. Plus, there'll be market stalls, food trucks, and heaps of kids activities. Enviro Fest twenty twenty four at Whiteman Park on March twenty three from ten till three. <laughs> You'd be wise to go to whitemanpark.com.au.